Okay, uh, thank you everyone. I think we're going to get started. So, uh, uh, just to begin, I think this session we're going to talk, uh, we've, we've I'll, as, as a way of introduction, um, we've heard a lot of, from Richard Manning and from the first panel on uh, the policy, the challenges, the availability of the information and the need to find networks to, to use it and to and provide results and things like that. And now I think we're going to talk more about um, some of the work we're doing in terms of aid tracking, what's actually happening at the country level, at the donor level, and then uh, sec sector-wise, and then what researchers are, are doing with this types of information. So um, I think what we're going to do, I'll do a brief introduction. We've got to my immediate right, I believe it's Dr. Soren Giegler. Um, uh, we, whom we've worked with for many years. He's um, with the innovation practice at the World Bank, at World Bank Institute. He's done ICT for D for maybe a hundred years, I would say. And um, he has, he's a, has a lot to do with how uh, maps.worldbank.org happened and how that whole uh, mapping for results initiative was able to be successful within the bank. And he also have a, has a great passion for um, civil society and, and results. Um, Next to Soren is Dr. Mike Findlay from Brigham Young University. He um, he did he was one of the chief architects of the geocoding work that you're going to see, and he will give us the researcher perspective and try to be a little bit provocative and uh, the types of questions that need to be asked of this information to make it effective. And then lastly, uh, Hamang um, Karela from uh, GFDRR at the World Bank. Uh, I always get it wrong, but uh, Global Facility for Disaster, Recovery, and Reconstruction. Okay. <laughs> uh, next time, next time. So um, we've done a lot of work with, with him in particular, trying to provide portals and dashboards, decision-making tools around disaster aid, where it's going, and how it can be managed. So I think I will kick it off. This is a bit unorthodox, but we were having an Aid Data 2.0 launch, so I'll go ahead and talk about, uh, give you a sneak peek as to Aid Data 2.0. Then I'll lead into um, a discussion about country systems, and then we'll proceed with the panel. We'll probably hold all questions to the end. So. Can you hear me? Uh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Stephen Davenport, Development Gateway. Uh, I lead the innovation practice, and um, I'm also co-executive director of AidData.org, www.AidData.org, two Ds. So um, just to kick it off, um, Aid Data, the mission is to increase the impact of development assistance by making aid information available more transparently and with an access to more stakeholders. And we're also, one of our main missions is to increase, to improve the quality of the research and aid allocation, uh, on aid allocation and aid effectiveness. So some of you might have seen aiddata.org previously, and, and what, what was the case in aiddata 1.0 was a database where you would go search, you'd get the data, and uh, you'd go do what you want with it. Well, things have changed. So we partnered up, well, well before, we partnered up with William & Mary, uh, BYU, and Development Gateway to provide a partnership to, um, to make aiddata.org and then take it to the next level. Um, what that did was it got a bunch of data together, smart people, and then technology. We've decided to take on a new approach. So instead of just being a database, we're going to be, we are more of a program, a platform. So not only do we provide data, but we provide expertise in certain areas. We do research, and then we provide innovative technology tools. We are uh, envisioning ourselves as an innovation lab for new ideas. So in, to copy or to echo Aleem's themes, we assemble the fuel and we provide the vehicles, but we could use some help with the people and the cake. So, uh, just to give you an idea of what this what this looks like, uh, here is a sneak peek at a data two O. So, as you, um, for those that have seen it before, it's really a, a it, it's. In one O version, it was a, primarily a search page to retrieve data. Now we've got different themes, so I'll walk you through it briefly. 
but um, you can explore. So those that used a data previously, you still have the same ability to collect data. Give it a minute. This is bleeding edge technology. <laughs> So for the, you can select what you'd like in terms of donors, recipients, purpose codes, activity codes, and get data sets, and those data sets will be in IATI format as well. But now we've added a few layers. So what we did was when we got all these, these organizations together, um, we found that we had a lot more data than we thought we did. So when we started collecting information, we found that we had all these data sets. So as was mentioned by Richard and others, we have a privileged relationship with the CRS, and a large portion of the data that we have is the DAC CRS data. But we have a lot of other data sets that we've been collecting, non-DAC bilaterals, et cetera, et cetera. And those are searchable within the database, but we also have some that are in some process of being collected. So we, we found that we had various numbers of data sets. We also are moving in, and I'll explain that a little bit more, um, in a few minutes, but we've actually started to geocode it, which is a lot of what you've heard before in terms of visualizing the data. So you can go and you can get data sets, geocoded data sets. IATI data sets are forthcoming. And then we found that we have a lot of research to offer. So by collecting, uh, not only we provide data, but we provide all different types of research. So uh, you can actually replicate research results. We'll give you the data sets for that. We have articles and books, working papers, briefs, et cetera, et cetera. So a plethora of information in addition to just data provision. Let me just zoom back and, and show you briefly what we're doing in terms of dashboards. So it was mentioned uh, there is a plethora of data, and, and to use a metaphor, it's like drinking out of a fire hose. It's worse than that. It's like drinking out of several fire hoses. So one of the things we're doing with A-Data now is creating dashboards, sector-like dashboards that will be dis discussed a little bit um, in future panels uh, with Hamang on how we've taken A-Data and compressed it into some visual tools that will allow you to make better decisions and see more summary information on the data. You can see a preview here of the sector dashboard. So for a given sector, you can see the top donors, top recipients, common keywords. You can see the project records and download those if you choose. But you can also see the aggregates and the maps and things like that. Again, we discussed research, Aid Data Raw. So like we said, we're calling it Aid Data Raw. I promised I'd put the carrot up because my colleague asked for it. So we have the freshest data. We have different types of data. Uh, geocoded M and E, and I will show you a slide on on some of the IEG data from the World Bank. We will have uh, collected and consolidated the IATI data set. So you heard that a bunch of donors signed the IATI initiative, but who's collecting all that data and putting it in one place? And we intend to do that. And we've already we've been working with IATI since its inception in Accra. What we learned very quickly and with the help of our partners at BYU and William & Mary is that geolocation is critical to any type of subnational analysis, to building applications, to visually displaying a lot of information in a small space. So using a, Mike will talk about it in more detail because he's the expert, but borrowing some uh, methodologies from Sweden and then working with close partners, which are the World Bank Institute and uh, the CCAPS program, so University of Texas at Austin, we were able to develop a methodology for geocoding, not just geocoding project data, but then putting it to work in terms of climate change adaptation and things like that. But again, that'll be discussed later. What you'll find in the panels from here forward is you'll see a sprinkling of Aid Data 2.0 throughout a lot of the things that we're doing, whether we're providing the data, helping them build visuals, uh, do dashboards, um, the idea that, that we're putting this data to work and we're going that last mile. We also, um, just to, another plug for IATI, is when people saw the maps that you're about to see, 
they wanted to know how we did it. And when we told them how we did it, uh, IATI approached us to use that methodology as the de facto geocoding methodology, and, and they've done so. As a function of uh, some of the work we've been doing with uh, World Bank Open, Open Data and with WBI, we, we started to build tools. So I think it was Mr. Wheeler talked about credibility is based on unpacking. Well, we've unpacked a good portion of the way we've done data collection, the way we've done data classification, and the way we've done data coding and visualization. So in terms of when you go to the, the ADATA 2.0 site, you'll be able to see um, all the code, code books, code methodologies, etc. We even built uh, with the with some resources and support from DECDG, the Open Data Group at the bank, um, we were able to build actually a tool, a geocoding toolkit that will allow anyone um, that wants to geocode, donors in particular, geocode their project data, they will have an open source, uh, freely available tool to geocode. And that has embedded inside it um, the actual methodology that is also IoT compliant. So we're taking the data, we're making it accessible, we're making analytical tools around it, and we're actually giving data entry tools, et cetera, et cetera, to make it easier to do. It was all spreadsheet-based at the outset. We've moved from spreadsheet to visual editing and modification. And in turn, what this is also helping us do is get our head around service delivery, get our head around how are you going to use a cell phone to edit data visually, how are you going to find a location, make a comment, post a picture, do a video audio clip. We've done several uh, geocoding examples that after the, after the presentation you can come to one of us at the DG and we can give you links to, to live uh, versions of our visualizations. The first of which is Development Loop. We did, you heard about the Apps for Development competition at the World Bank. We submitted a, an entry called Development Loop. We didn't win, but it was a good, it was a good application to show kind of a, a Kenyan uh, aid division of labor story. And um, that is live. African Development Bank, I can actually show you. So here's an example of what we did for AFDB and continue to work with them on coding their portfolio. But you're seeing a very a live interactive map that shows projects, and I think we're picking Cambodia. Sorry, Cameroon. And now you're seeing, um, I believe it's malnutrition rates, and project activities in Cameroon. And some of the advanced features allow you, so if you want to actually see what's going on where, you can see the project list. So these are the projects represented. And you can actually select an area. And it'll highlight the project activity. So the idea is we're using technology to make things easier to find, make decisions easier to make. And just maybe we're not giving you the answers, but we're helping you ask the right questions. Again, we'll be coding the, their remaining portfolio in the coming six months. And then again, uh, I'll, I'll actually go into more detail about the actual maps that we did for Malawi and Nepal and elsewhere in a minute. This is an example of something that's just happened, that, that we just got a data set from the evaluation group at the World Bank, and we were able to geocode that information uh, for Afghanistan. So, you know, uh, you'd, you'd assume that areas where there's more violence and more kill that the projects would, have, would struggle to be successful. But what you're seeing here is something a bit different. I don't know if you can see the colors as well. But you can see that in the, in the center of the country, where there is not as much uh, violence, et cetera, et cetera, you see projects that are not satisfactory. So this, again, is an example of how it doesn't give you the answer, but it gives you the right question to ask. So this is the kind of thing we're going to continue to do over the next year, year and a half, two years, is take these data sets and try to make some sense of them, and then try to take those, those examples and move them down to our country platforms that I'll talk about in a minute. So you saw, I think it was David Wheeler was showing some advanced visuals of deforestation and things like that. We're going to continue to move in that direction. So using advanced geospatial analysis, we're going to take it from pretty maps and decision-making dashboards to more hardcore analytics. And that takes more detailed data, that takes partnerships, that takes um, some local presence in country to get the right information 
to tell those stories. And we intend to, the next innovation we think that we're going to do with WBI and our partners will be more in-depth geocoding. So the mapping for results work we did with the World Bank for the annual meetings was about project document uh, geolocation, which was not sufficient for service delivery that I'll explain in a moment. We need more detail. We don't need just project location. We need actual street corner. We need lat long uh, in order to be relevant for service delivery, for people to really give a comment project documents aren't sufficient. So that means boots on the ground, that means people in country coding, that means applications that can capture that level of detail. And then also just how do you show, if you make one application for everybody, you don't satisfy anybody. <laughs> so we're going to build some that are very focused on incentives. And uh, some of our partners will explain in more detail how RCTs and randomized control trials can start to measure incentives, see why people would use these things in the first place, see who our customers really are, um, a lot of that will be is actually a, a good example of how this partnership within Aid Data has been so beneficial. Is we do technology, um, we have data, but we also have hardcore universities behind us um, that can do the the heavy brain power. And then we're in terms of uh, we heard a lot of talk about M and E. Well, M and E is a lot of things again to a lot of people. So um, if service delivery is uh, and feedback loops are in effect M and E to some, then we'll be moving in that direction. This is a visual of uh, just the coding we've done for the bank and AFDB, so um, again, uh, we're trying to show both a global perspective, but that's less relevant, subnational is where it's at, and then uh, really what we want to do is service delivery, so and beneficiary feedback loops, that's the next step, and you're seeing an example of Nairobi, Kenya street corner data and then edit forms and data collection around that. So this is where you would uh, drill down on a project, find the activities, or talk to the, uh, see what, what consultant or firm is doing the, the actual implementation, and then you could put in video clips, audio, picture, I mean, uh, just comments, et cetera, et cetera. So another example, so street corner data. And then mobile applications. So we've already one of our one of our partners is um, Esri. They do a pretty good job in terms of a suite of applications that are pretty high powered that can do both the advanced analytics and the mobile extensions. Um, so, for instance, we've already got some of these these maps working on the the iPhone. So this is the same. This is an example of the of the Kenya map with project activities for those that can see it and a population density map. So we've, we've already moved in the direction, technically, of providing this data. Now the issue is incentives, the issue is low bandwidth, the issue is capacity. And then if you really want service delivery, the government's got to be involved. Um, this is the resulting uh, enhanced project view is what we call it. So when you start to collect data that's not just in the project documents for, for donor activities or uh, government funded activities you're now seeing that that we can put um, unstructured feedback comments on the project um, different types of content content from donors content from governments content from citizens and trying to create and then you see the geolocation information in the top right so taking what we used to know of a project and adding all types of unstructured feedback to it visual information to make to tell the story to give you more than just um, document information. And really the key, again, is will be mentioned again, is the incentives to, to provide that. Okay, so this is interesting, but as Aleem has said, it's not, not yet important. So how do we make this interesting data important and sustainable? Well, we have a, what we think is the answer to that. Uh, one of the things that the Development Gateway that's been mentioned by Richard and mentioned by the first panel is these aid management platforms, and we have about 20 of them. There are project management systems within the Ministry of Finance or Planning of the partner country governments. And what we try to do in aid data is package innovations, do these geospatial analysis features, these dashboards, these these mobile applications and move them down when they are ready, move them into the country platforms. And when you move them to country platforms, there's a lot of things that need to happen, capacity building, uh, IT infrastructure, uh, connectivity issues. So it's very difficult at the country level to do some of this, some of this stuff. But 
we, we try to incubate it in aid data and then move it to AMP. The first example we like to highlight is Malawi. So using resources from the CCAPS program, University of Texas at Austin, they lent us some resources, some students, to go and collect all these projects and geolocate them. Because we had an AMP running in the country, one of the, but it didn't have geolocation information. We hadn't built that feature. So we went in, we geocoded all the information, and we came up with a map. And this is, you'll see this map, I'm sure, two or three more times during the course of the day. You're now seeing 27 donors uh, geocoded on a map of Malawi. So this tells a targeting of aid story, it tells a division of labor story. And it's almost embarrassing that we didn't have this map <laughs> 15, 20 years ago. Um, you're able to actually see what donor is doing what where. It is true that it is a little busy, and we intend to carve it up by sector by donor to try to tell the story a bit better, but it's the first step at really geocoding and geolocating all of the externally financed resources in a country. The issue, of course, is sustainability. Our answer to sustainability is this is a government platform. They now can take it over. We did the geocoding, the heavy lifting for the current portfolio. We give it to them. We upgrade the software. They maintain it from there. This also, when you start talking budget integration on this map, wouldn't it be nice if we had a layer of domestic resources? Wouldn't this be nice if we had expenditure flows on this same map? So you can see the total resource picture. So we're moving from aid resource picture to total resource picture. To do that effectively and sustainably, you need to move it to the country. The country needs to own it. Um, so this will be highlighted in Bisan, uh, this uh, aid effectiveness high-level forum, uh, the last and final aid effectiveness high-level forum. So I think we'll have Nepal and Malawi present some of the work we've done. Liberia is another example. That was funded by USAID. USAID um, helped us to build out, I explained that we had the students geocoding in Malawi, but they were doing it largely manually. The software couldn't do it. USAID gave us some money to build that module. USAID also said, when you build that module, let's roll it out to, to other countries. Uh, so in Liberia, we have built it out with ESRI, with the geospatial module, and it, and it will be used in a few sectors to, to do some pilot, pilot work in terms of planning, it will be included in the next release. And then after that, it, would be, it will actually make its way to the other 19 countries that we have. And um, that was done with, the, with um, some of the funding from USAID, which was, which was quite helpful. What it looks like, this is an example of Liberia. So now you're seeing, before you're seeing more of a global picture. You saw the Malawi picture subnationally. This is another example of a fully functional. The other was a static map. This is actually a screenshot of the aid management platform and uh, the layers and the project data in that platform. So as you can see, you can see poverty, poverty rates and then uh, donor activity. And then you can also see structures. So you can see roads, hospitals, schools, and then what donor activity is working where. So, so you can see clearly how this could be used for planning and monitoring and evaluation. And using maps and uh, geospatial, uh, you can do that in an easier way. And I think Soren might talk about that a little bit. Again, you can drill down and see activities. And also you can select zones. Like I showed you on the live map of AFDB, you can select a diameter or an area, and it will actually give you the list of projects in that area, and you can make an effective decision based on that. Okay, so that's really the preview of not only Aid Data 2.0 and the kind of the organizational shift and the thrust of Aid Data 2.0, but its practical application in terms of innovation for the country systems that we are offering to uh, recipient country governments right now. So we're really excited about it. Again, we've, uh, Aid Data in general has become uh, quite a success story. It's a, again, it's a good combination of smart people, technology, and good data. Um, the goal now is to try to extend it a bit for real impact and real results. So, thank you.